mountain you won't climb up, coming at you. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming at me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming at me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't. We were in the same key. Good morning. Welcome to God's house. We are glad you're here. It is a holiday weekend, but God's still here. Amen. We're going to worship him this morning and give him every praise.
Let's go back and grab that God, my Savior. God, my Savior. God. Come on, let's worship him this morning. Hallelujah. 
We thank you for salvation. Thank you for deliverance. Thank you for peace and healing. Hallelujah. When I think about the Lord, how he saved me, how he raised me, how he filled me with the Holy Ghost, how he healed me to the uttermost. When I think about the Lord, how he picked me up and turned me around, how he placed my feet on solid ground.
just thinking this morning, hallelujah. time in our service, I'm going to ask the elders to come forward so that we might pray with you. You know, 1 Corinthians 13, 9 says, for we know in part and we prophesy in part, and it's in reference to the Spirit of God and the activity of the Spirit here on earth. And until Jesus comes and the perfect has come and we are in his presence, we believe that the activity of the Holy Spirit is here, that, that Jesus sent the Spirit to be here until he comes again. And so this morning, we want to pray with you, believing for the miraculous. We want to pray with you, believing that you might be healed, that you may have miraculous provision. This morning, we want to believe that God hears our prayers and answers our prayers. And until Jesus comes back, we must rely on the Spirit. Amen. So if you have a need this morning or you want to come down and lift up maybe a family member or a friend in prayer, I want to encourage you to come down and find one of the elders and let them agree with you in prayer. Those that are online and watching, I want to encourage you to maybe you'll send us a message. If you're comfortable, you can just write there on the stream. Put a message and let us know what we can pray with you about. We'll go back and we'll look at it. We want to continue to agree in prayer. We know some of you are not able to make it. Those of you, if you don't need to come down for prayer, would you join me and let's lift up the needs of our brothers and sisters this morning. God, we love you. Lord, we thank you that your spirit is here. We thank you, God, that you love us so much that you sent Jesus to die on the cross to cover our sins and that you love us so much that when Jesus ascended into heaven that he said, I will send another and the Holy Spirit has been given to us. Lord, your spirit is here this morning. We are believing for the needs of our brothers and sisters in Christ, those that are in this room, those that are in this church, those that are watching online, and they are crying out and saying, God, I need a touch from you this morning. Lord, we are believing in faith that there are going to be answers to prayers. Some of these prayers have been prayed for years, and they have been waiting on an answer, and we are believing, God, that you are going to answer. Some of these prayers, they're doctors that have just given information to us that we don't know what to do with, that we've been given diagnosis, that we don't maybe even know how to handle or what to think. But all we can do is say, Lord, I give it to you. I am going to trust in you. And when the doctor tells me one thing, Lord, I'm going to trust in you to be the healer. Lord, we are believing that your spirit is alive and active in this church. We believe your spirit is alive and active here on this earth. We believe in faith for the miraculous. So, Lord, release, release healing in this place. Release provision in this place. Release wisdom in this place for broken relationships. God, we pray for restoration. Lord, we trust you. We trust you. We trust your word. We trust your promises in your word. And until you come again, we are going to continue to pray and continue to believe that as we lift up the name of Jesus and as we lift you up and we call upon the name of Jesus, Lord, you hear our cries. And you will answer the prayers of your children. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We thank you for what you are doing right now here and in this moment. God, I thank you for what you have been preparing for this moment and for this service. I thank you, Lord, that you have great plans for this church, that you have great plans for your children. 
And I believe that the testimonies that go forth out of the answered prayers are going to stir up the faith of the saints to continue to believe for more and more activity of the Spirit, not for ourselves, but to draw others unto Christ, that there would be faith that would be stirred up, not that we're having faith that, God, you're just doing miraculous things for us, but, Lord, you're doing miraculous things in this place because you desire to show who you are. You desire to draw all others unto you, that they would see that God is doing something, and if they can do it for them, he can do it for me. Lord, we trust in you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let your word not return void. We praise your name. In the precious and powerful name of Jesus, we pray. And everyone said, amen. Amen. Well, welcome to University Church. We are glad that you are here with us today. If this is your first time with us, we welcome you. We know that we've got some students from Southwestern. They just came back into town this last week. This may be your first time, and maybe I haven't met you. Maybe you were here last year, but we welcome you back or for the first time. I would encourage you that if you're visiting the church in the seat back pocket in front of you, there's a little guest connection card. I encourage you to get that out, fill it out. And after service, I will meet you at the booth just on the other side of this wall out here. I'll meet you out there. We have a little gift for you uh, to give you for coming and visiting us today. I'd love to meet you, greet you. Uh, students, if you'll come and meet me out there, uh, I'd love to tell you a little bit more about well, what's coming up next week and the uh, free meal that we've got going on for you. Uh, I know that some of you have already signed up. I believe there might be a couple more spots to sign up to uh, help bring some more food next week. Uh, and so that way the students, not only we give them food while they're here, but then if there's extra, they can always take it back with them, right? Home-cooked meals, wonderful for students. Well, I know everybody just sat back down, but I'm going to ask you to stand right back up because now it's our meet and greet time. Go around, shake some hands, greet one another in the Lord this morning. Oh, and before I forget, there are the offering receptacles are in the back. So during this time, if you've got offering, you can fill that out and place it in the buckets there in the back.
child, I am with you. Everything will be all right. I see you in the morning. Good morning. What is today? Mission Sunday. I want to encourage everyone to, if you didn't put an offering in for missions, do so. There's a few people may, missing this morning, and three or four of you can throw in an extra $100 bill for missions. Uh, four weeks from today, October 3rd, is Mission Sunday as well, and we renew our pledges and we make new pledges. So you have four weeks to think about it and pray about it. When the Lord puts a number in your, your spirit, then that Sunday you'll be able to make out that pledge. Uh, also, immediately after service, it's not a, a full-blown meal, but we will have sample foods uh, of the um, foods that the missionaries that we support. We have some in uh, three or four in Africa, uh, Spain, and Dominion Republic, the Republic of Dominion, and uh, I can't think of the other one. And then we're going to have pictures on the table so you can see our missionaries that we support. And uh, I'd like to be able to have money come in, new pledges so that would be able to take on new missionaries. Right now we're at $1,200 a month. We've, we have tripled since Pastor uh, has been here. And I give God praise for that, don't you? Yes. Amen. You're done already? Man. I just got my snacks ready and then I couldn't take All right. You guys ready?
Come on, give him a big hand. Thank you, guys and gals. You're from Colorado, everybody's guys. We welcome all of you today. We're delighted to see you on a holiday weekend. Good to see some we haven't seen in a year or two showing up. Thank you for being here. Good to have the Trouts back there. God bless you guys. The Mitchells, we're glad to have you all here this morning. And to our college kids, welcome back and welcome home. <clears throat> Would you stand with me one more time? I preached really short last week, and I'm going to make up for it this week. <laughs> so I'll give you a chance to stand up, <laughs> get some feeling back in your legs. I want to report to you that I'm doing fantastic. Uh, if you don't know, I had a... I'm really not crippled. I've had a knee replacement, and it's only been three and a half weeks, and I'm doing about everything I want to do, except I'm not quite there yet. <laughs> I went out Friday and uh, just rode around with the guys it was pure torture. <laughs> I finally got on one little par three, and I said, I'm going to try to hit a golf ball. It was terrible. So I, I'm going to wait another week. I told him I'm going to play this Friday. Would you pray for God to give me strength? Because <laughs> it would be awesome for those guys to be beaten by a cripple. <laughs> but I'm doing fantastic, and uh, I thank you for all your prayers and your kindness is to us. I'm going to preach on a subject this morning that is probably one of the least liked subjects in the church. I want to talk about prayer. We can have a dinner and everybody shows up. Come on. We can have a prayer meeting and a few show up. But I'm going to tell you in the days to come, prayer is the most awesome weapon that God has given you. And I want to talk about it this morning. I'd like you to pray with me, would you? Would you pray with me? Pray for God to anoint me. Lord, I thank you for the moving of your spirit this morning. I thank you for touching us and giving me a special unction of your spirit. I realize the value of this subject. And I need you, Holy Spirit, to lead me and guide me and direct me. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody said amen. You may be seated. I'll get to some scripture here in a little bit. I, uh, I don't always read a text up front. We'll do it down the road. It's wonderful to see legacy begin and develop and even to be a part of that is, on, is ongoing. Fathers often leads, leave some kind of legacy. Um, my grandfather took me fishing when I was a kid. And I learned how to fish. Now, I haven't been fishing much lately unless I'm looking for a golf ball. <laughs> but, but I love what uh, he did. I, he took me when I was about 13 or 14. I killed my first deer. I know that's cruel to some of you, but the meat sure was good. We enjoyed it. And, uh, and I appreciate the legacy, but my grandfather left a legacy that was even more powerful than anything he may have taught me. My uh, grandfather used to go out to one of his sheds or a barn uh, every night for prayer, and he'd take my dad with him. And my dad told me, said, I learned how to pray listening to my granddaddy, or to, to his dad. See, he said, if dad said something, then I would repeat it. And he learned, he learned how to pray. Well, guess where I learned how to pray? My dad would take me to church with him early. Now, he had prayer every day, but he'd take me to church with him early and he'd climb under the grand piano and he'd pray. And I had to listen. And so I heard my daddy pray. I'll never forget when my grandfather passed away, my dad and I are looking at the casket and, uh, and I know, you know, both of our hearts are hurting. My grandfather was my buddy. And dad looked over me. He said, you know what I'm gonna miss the most? He said, his prayers. He prayed for me every day. Dad pastored for many, many years, 
and the prayers of my grandfather, I believe, sustained him. And I think it's a powerful thing when we learn our, our children how to pray. My kids used to go to church with me early, and we had a prayer room that kind of circled the back of the, the uh, platform or the stage. And it had a built-in altar all the way around it. And my daughter would walk on the altar, because she was little, and my son would walk beside me, and they'd hold my hand, and we would walk and pray. Don't worry, honey, I'm not gonna get close to it. We would walk and pray, and my kids learned how to pray. I'm not saying that to brag. I'm just saying prayer is a powerful thing, and you and I have to learn what to do. It's, it's one thing to learn how to fish, but it's another thing to learn how to pray. As a matter of fact, sometimes when you're fishing, you pray you can catch some fish. That's why they call it fishing. If you were always catching, they'd call it catching. Some of you are going to get that in a little bit. We often pass along things to the next generation. My uh, reading in the scriptures tells me that Abraham was a liar. He said he was a father of faith. He was a liar too. And because of that, Isaac lied. Told the same lie as daddy lied, told. Well, she's not my wife. She's my sister. So daddy taught son how to lie. Who taught Another son had a lie. As a matter of fact, Jacob meant liar, cheater, supplanter. Wow, what have we done to this one? Grandpa lied, daddy lied, now we got a liar is his whole character. He had to be changed. And today I, I want to talk about leaving a legacy of one of the greatest possibilities you could ever leave. That's teaching someone how to pray and learning how to pray yourself. <clears throat> Abraham prayed and God established a covenant with him. Isaac prayed and God extended that covenant to him. Jacob prayed and God renewed the covenant there at Peniel with him. David prayed and God established a covenant with him and told him, you know, his kingdom would go on forever. We know someday Jesus is gonna come back and gonna set up on the throne of David. Solomon prayed and God extended the covenant to him. The importance of prayer cannot be overstated. Prayer is a powerful, powerful weapon. As a matter of fact, Paul said, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, pulling down strongholds. How, how can I, by getting on my knees or laying down somewhere, are walking, <coughs> excuse me, that's the first time I've sneezed preaching since the last time. <laughs> I about lost my, my spot here. Thank God for notes. <laughs> the importance of prayer, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God pulling down stronghold. How can a church in Waxahachie, Texas, that isn't a large church yet, but we're gonna be, how can our prayer meeting on Saturday night affect a nation? Because where two or three believe on anything as touching heaven, the Bible says we can have it. And so we've been praying. We've been praying for God to expose the evil of Washington, D.C., man, if God starts cleaning that place up, there won't be anybody left. We've been praying for God to expose the evil that's trying to seduce our world around us. We've been praying for God to change things and move things. We've prayed on Saturday nights for God to help us find these lost children. You know, almost every, every day you'll see a commercial of some kind that, looking for this daughter, this son. Well, we prayed several times and they found whole truckloads of them. One day we prayed and they found 60 some odd children that week. Why wouldn't we pray every week for God to find them? Are you here? Prayer is such a powerful thing. As a matter of fact, in Luke chapter 11, verses one through four, 
the disciples came to Jesus and they did not say, teach us how to raise the dead. Teach us how to heal the leper. Teach us how to cast out demons. What did they say? Lord, teach us how to pray. Wow. And so Jesus began to teach them. We all know the Lord's Prayer, and oftentimes we say it, but we don't realize the power that's in it. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, here on earth, even as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. I'm amazed today at how many people in the church do not know how to pray. I know you're not going to shout me down this morning, but I just don't care. <laughs> I want this church to be known as a place of prayer where the power of God resides because people pray. Now, we have prayer meeting every Saturday night from 6 or 7. You say, that's real inconvenient. Well, prayer is inconvenient. But I believe with all of my heart that out of that prayer meeting, we're going to see mighty things happen for the kingdom of God. And it's time we as a church learn the importance of prayer and how to pray. Jesus rose early in the morning to pray. Sometimes he prayed all night. And he prayed before every major decision. When he's in the Garden of Gethsemane, the biggest decision he has to make is to stand in judgment and to be nailed to a cross. And he prays to the Father so hard and so diligently that the scripture says sweat came off of him like great drops of blood. The agony he was feeling in his spirit, but he was crying out to his Father, Father, if it be thy will, take this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. What would happen in our lives if we prayed a prayer like that every day? God, today, it's not about pleasing me. It's not about my happiness, my joy. It's about you. Could I take a moment and show you how to pray? Would you indulge me? And maybe a spirit of prayer might jump right on you. Jesus gave us the model, our Father, which art in heaven. Our Father. You may have had a father that wasn't very good. Maybe your father's gone like mine. But we have a Father in heaven who promised to never leave us nor forsake us. And so we begin to pray our Father, which is in heaven. Thank God you're not in Washington, D.C., Thank God you're not in our county or city government. Thank God you rule upon the heavens. Thank God you call the stars by name. What a mighty God you are. You are magnificent and wonderful. You're mighty in battle. Your arm is strong for your people. You're a God of majesty and wonder. You're a God who can do the impossible. You're the God who has done the impossible. Lord, you delivered your people. I know you'll deliver us. Lord, you fed your people in the wilderness, even though they complain. And I know that you're going to feed us and take care of us because we love you and we're we're with you. So we begin to magnify God. I magnify you, Lord, from the depths of my soul and from the depths of my spirit. Uh, there's no one like you, Father. You're my friend. But not only are you my friend, you're my God. You're my God. I hold you above every other God. And we spend a little bit of time right there telling God how great he is. Let me tell you, God loves that. Hallowed be thy name. There's no name 
like the name of Jesus. At the name of Jesus, demons shake and tremble. At the name of Jesus, diseases have to disappear. At the name of Jesus, peace and comfort comes in the midst of a storm, in the midst of a struggle. At the name of Jesus, uh, circumstances are changed and things turn around. Are you listening to me? You can do this in about five minutes uh, and touch a lot and change a world around you. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Oh, God, we don't know what's good for us. I don't know what's good for my family. I don't know what's good for my household. I don't know what's good for my city. I don't know what's good, but you know. And we pray that the kingdom of heaven would come here. We pray that the kingdom of heaven would be known. In heaven, there, are, there is no indecision. When God says it, it happens. In heaven, everything flows smoothly because God is in complete control. In our world, God is not in control. We have to take control through the power of God. I know God's on the throne, and I know ultimate control comes from God. But we need to pray that his kingdom come and his will be done in our circumstances. May your kingdom come in my grandchildren. May your kingdom come in my sons and daughters. May your kingdom come in our relationships and our, our relatives around us. May your kingdom come in our church. May your kingdom come in my community and my city. Are you getting this this morning? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, here on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Lord, I don't know what I need today, but you know what I need. I do know I'm facing circumstances that I don't know how I'm going to get through it, but you are the way maker. How do I know you're the way maker? Because you've made a way for me time after time after time after time. And just tell God how great he is in helping you. And Lord, I pray that through everything I do today, it brings glory and honor to you. May your kingdom come and your will be done. And spend some time there. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lord, I must be honest with you, I probably sinned when I was driving through traffic the other day. I said some things about people that I don't even know. You're laughing, but you know it's true. And you know you need to repent. You know, I've been praying, God help me when I drive to keep my mouth shut. Come on. I know I need to spend a little time right here. I can tell it. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Well, they did me wrong. I'm going to remember that the rest of my life. Do me wrong once, shame on you. Do me wrong twice, shame on me. Jesus said, forgive. How many times? 70 times 7, 490 times a day. Whew. Have you been offended that many times in a day? Some days? God isn't putting a cap on the number. What God is saying, just keep on forgiving and keep on forgiving and keep on forgiving. Lord, I forgive. Lord, I forgive that staff member that did this. And Lord, I forgive my neighbor who did that. And Lord, I forgive. And Lord, I want my heart to be pure and clean. Are you listening to me pray this morning? I'm going to forgive my debtors. Lord, would you help me to make it through every temptation that comes my way today? Lead us not into temptation. Help me, Lord. Now, God isn't going to lead us into any temptation. But what this prayer is saying is, I know temptation is going to come my way. And I ask you, God, to help me. Take me by my hand and lead me through every circumstance, every situation, everything. I need you, God. I don't know how to navigate this world today. I don't know how to navigate the politics of this world today. I don't know how to navigate. I need you. Lord, you said you'd be my shepherd. You'd walk with me even through the valley of the shadow of death. And just talk to God like that. I don't know about you, but I need him every day.
deliver us from the evil one. You have an enemy of your soul who's coming to steal, kill, and destroy. And I need help. I need God to deliver me from the evil one. I need, first of all, a discerning spirit. Father, give me a discerning spirit so that I know how to go out and how to come in. Give me a discerning spirit so I know what's the enemy and what's not the enemy. Give me a discerning spirit so I know how to fight, how to war, so I even know how to pray, so I know how to walk this walk. Give me a discerning spirit. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, I've taken about four or five minutes here, and I prayed. And I could build on that. Listen, prayer is not hard. I used to, every morning, about six or seven o'clock, I'd get in a prayer closet somewhere. Most of the time, I'd go to the church. I'd kneel down to pray. And just as soon as I kneel down to pray, the Satan would bring something to my mind that I really needed to give some attention to. And it would distract me. You know how I overcame that? Mitch, I took me a little pad with me. And I put it on the altar. And when Satan reminded me of something, I said, thank you for reminding me. I'll get to that after a while. And I go on about my business praying. We must learn that prayer has to be a priority in our life. If you only pray when you come to church, then you are spiritually malnourished. If you only pray when trouble comes, you're in trouble and you don't even know it. Most of us only pray when somebody's sick. We only pray when there's a financial need. We only pray. When some circumstance, we don't think we can get help. What if we prayed every day? Thy kingdom come. You see, prayer is important. And Jesus taught his disciples how to pray. You see, prayer takes commitment. Are you listening to me? Commitment. Write it down in the margin of your Bible. Commitment. Commitment. Can I tell you most days, I don't feel like praying. Don't look at me so sanctimonious. I don't feel like praying most days. But I know I need to pray. I know I have to pray. And I call on God. Sometimes it's all hours of the day, all hours of the night, many nights, waking at 2 and 3 in the morning. And I realize that my body may be doing something to me, but what an opportunity to cry out to God. And it's amazing. It's sort of like when you can't sleep, read the Bible. You'll nod off in a few verses. We begin to pray. We have to learn how to pray. It takes commitment. If you travel to Europe, you're going to see many magnificent churches and cathedrals. The craftsmanship is, is intricate, delicate. It's exquisite. We visited one in Spain took 500 years to build. The gold, the jewels, magnificent. Listen, the person who drew the plans didn't get to see it completed. The person who laid the foundation didn't get to see it completed. It took 500 years, at least probably 10 generations were willing to give and work and support a building that most of them would never attend a service in. They were willing to build for the generation to come. Prayer takes commitment. Can I tell you, I pray over my grandbabies because they're being raised in a wicked world today and everything is coming to seduce them. And so I pray over them. I've got one little grandson that's a golfing prodigy. He is magnificent. He thinks he's going to be a professional. But you know, Papa's working. I'd love to see him succeed. But more than anything, I want him to know Jesus. And I want him to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. And I pray, God, if you don't want him to be a professional golfer, then don't let it happen. 
Don't tell his daddy I prayed that prayer. <laughs> I'd a whole lot rather see him standing in a pulpit preaching. <clears throat> My oldest son was really a great baseball player, played all through high school. And uh, his senior year was scouted twice by a professional team. And he told me all four years, Dad, I'm going to play baseball professionally. Well, when he was about nine years old, I was preaching revival and the family was with me. And I remember at breakfast one morning, Jared told us, Dad, I feel a call to preach. Now, I never pushed him. I never cajoled him. Just let him. But when he told me I'm going to be a professional baseball player, then I said to him, well, what about your call in ministry? He said, Daddy, I can speak to more people like that. I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> okay. Year three, year four, Jesse. I mean, he, he made all district team, center fielder, cannon for an arm, run like a deer, mostly like his father. <laughs> In my dreams, I never could run that fast. The last week of baseball season, he comes to me and said, Dad, change my mind. I said, about what? He said, I think I'm going to go ahead and go to Southwestern and study to be a preacher. I said, what changed your mind? He said, well, I've gone 0 for 16 at the plate. I think God's trying to tell me something. I said, thank you, Jesus. Now, this morning, the boy is standing in a pulpit preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Would it have been great to see him play baseball? Yeah. Would he have made a lot of money? Yeah. Would he have been a Christian witness? Most likely. But boy, I'm proud of that son standing in a pulpit preaching the gospel. I am proud. Proud of that. I pray God's will be done in my kids' Amen. lives. I'm committed to that prayer. The legacy of prayer requires instruction. The old adage is true. You catch a fish and you feed a man for a day, you teach him how to fish, and you feed him for a lifetime. Most of us teach our sons many things, but if we teach them prayer and we give them instruction about prayer, wow, what a difference it makes in their life. The legacy of prayer requires passion. Look, here I am again. Isn't it amazing every time you start to pray, you start yawning? Am I the only one? Come on, don't look at me so holy. I get sleepy. So I felt the Holy Spirit convict me one day. If I were talking to you and I yawned, I'd say, pardon me and I heard Holy Spirit say why don't you pardon yourself whenever you're talking to me passion the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous person avails much when we pray with passion God hears us and he said I'll hear you call unto me and I'll hear you, and I'll answer, and I'll show you great and mighty things you can't even think of. The legacy of prayer requires patience. Elijah prayed seven times before the rain came. Daniel prayed 40 days before his answer came. <clears throat> and the angel said, God heard you the first day and sent me the first day but I've been fighting, but here I am. Sometimes you just pray and you keep on praying. I've told you about an uncle of mine and an aunt of mine that I've heard my daddy pray for for probably 40 some years. All of my life, we prayed for the salvation of those two. And I led my aunt to the Lord. And she was so gloriously saved. She looked at me and said, I'm ready to meet Jesus now. My uncle was stubborn, 
walking him down the aisle at the funeral. He was cussing. This should have been me and not her. But we kept praying, kept praying, and kept praying. And he became ill. He fell into a coma. I said, God, somehow you got to reach him. All the prayers of my father, all the prayers of my grandfather and grandmother, all of our prayers, we've cried out to you. Lord, we've prayed and prayed and prayed. You have to save his soul. He came out of the coma the day he passed away. And my cousin told me, said, a man walked into the room, just happened to be walking around. And he said, I'm a chaplain. Could I pray with you? And my uncle let him lead him in the sinner's prayer. And my cousin said, you know how he died? He was singing Amazing Grace. <laughs> Sorry if I get emotional. But the patience and the tenacity of somebody who prayed brought him to Jesus. And I can imagine the reunion in heaven when my daddy saw his little brother come home. Prayer takes patience. And you got to keep on. Prayer requires action. Well, we better do something about this. Maybe the best thing you can do is pray. Are you listening to me this morning? Is this helping anybody here? Psalm 63 and verse 1 says, Early will I ask of you. In other words, the first thing of my day, I'm going to cry out to you. I may not can change things with my wallet. I may not can change things with my intellect. But I can change things through prayer. And when a man or woman of God begins to pray, something has to move. We are people of action. If you've got a son or a daughter, if you've got a grandchild, if you've got a relative that doesn't know the Lord, don't stop praying. Don't give up. Fight the good fight of faith and keep on praying. For God's listening to you. And God loves that so more than you do. And he's going to do everything in his power to bring them to him. Prayer requires simplicity. Don't make it complicated. I had a deacon one time that we always had prayer meeting before services and he would get very boisterous and he would brag on himself in his prayers and oh thank you Lord that I was able to witness to this this week and I you know and I wanted to go Argh. it reminded me of the Pharisees in the scriptures Lord look what we've done Jesus said when you pray don't get up in front of people and be flowery about it now that's my interpretation so what about that publican? Most people think that says Republican. What about that publican that came and fell over the altar and cried, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. The Pharisee was praying a flowery prayer that everybody would love to hear. But this guy was touching God. Make it simple. It's you and God talking. Prayer changes things. Prayer causes God to act in the affairs of, affairs of man. Prayer brings glory to God. Prayer satisfies man. Have you ever had a perplexing issue and you cried out to God until you felt a peace and you knew everything's going to be okay? Has that ever happened to you? Are you here this morning? <laughs> Has it ever happened? Oh, many times. We used to call it praying through, Joe. We prayed until we got an answer. We prayed until we felt a release in our spirit. We prayed until we knew God heard us. We remembered the scripture, calling to me and I'll hear and I'll answer. And I'll show you great and mighty things. We have to, we have to pray. Someday you, I, our children, you're going to be too old to play sports. You're going to be too old to go fishing. You're going to be too old to hunt. But you'll never be too old to pray. 
one of the most powerful things I learned about prayer was Sister J.C. Thompson, Dwight Thompson's mother. Sister Thompson lived across the street from the church. Her husband had built the church. When I came there, I asked him to come and be on our staff again, and we honored him. I had a chair brought up, put on the platform, and I said, Brother Thompson, this is your chair. Doesn't matter how full this building gets, nobody's going to sit in that chair with you. I'd go across the street to visit Sister Thompson, who had terrible Alzheimer's. She didn't know who Brother Thompson was. She would come in and say, who are you? He said, I finally learned to say, oh, I'm your brother. I'm your friend. She said, you need to get out of here because my husband will find you. He said, Pastor, it's tough. But she doesn't remember birthdays. She doesn't remember anniversaries. She doesn't remember anything. Many times I'd go over and I'd go see her. I'd walk in the room. Sister Thompson, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. She knew that much. So I'd chit-chat, but she couldn't carry on a conversation with you. Finally, I'd say, Sister Thompson, is there anything we can pray about? And she would take off praying. I'm telling you, that disease had taken her mind, but it hadn't taken away her prayer. And she would begin to call on God. And you'd stand there and listen. The most wonderful, precious prayers I've ever heard in my life came from a mind that couldn't even function and tell you what day it was. You can take a lot of things from us, but you can't take that prayer out of our heart. We have to learn that prayer lasts forever. Did you get that? The prayers I pray constantly are coming before the throne of God. Constantly before the throne of God until they're answered. Wow. What is the atmosphere of heaven like? I don't know. We don't really know what heaven's like. We know what the new Jerusalem's like. But in heaven, we know God's there. We know his presence is all over the place. We know there's joy. We know there's peace. But I kind of think the atmosphere is not only filled with his glory, but it's filled with the prayers of the saints. And can I tell you, Jesus is about to come again. And here's what the word of the Lord said. The prayer of his saints will bring him back. And it's time for us to begin to pray. Even so, come Lord Jesus. We're ready. I'm ready for the rapture of the church. I'm ready for this thing to be over with. We're not looking for the great escape. We're looking for a great transition when this body takes on immortality and we are in the presence of God forever and ever and ever and ever. And prayer will sustain you until you get there. And I find myself praying more every day. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Even so, come. Oh, what about my loved ones that aren't saved yet? That puts an urgency to our prayer. Lord, we need you to come, and we want them saved when you come. Praise God. Prayer is a powerful thing. Can I tell you, prayer in your hands is more powerful than an open carry weapon. Prayer is more powerful than any bomb on this earth. <clears throat> Prayer moves things. Prayer changes nations. Prayer changes circumstances. Prayer is a powerful thing. Bow your head with me. I realize this is not a popular sermon because people don't want to hear about prayer. It makes us feel guilty. And I didn't preach this today to make you feel guilty. I preach this day, today to incite you and inspire you to walk in prayer, to change the way you pray. If you're here this morning and your heart's not right with God, 
you've slipped, you've strayed. You need God to touch you today. You want to make a new commitment to God. I've told you every Sunday I'm going to make an altar call because somebody might be in this room that may slip into eternity this week. And if you're not ready to meet God, I want you to slip your hand up right where you are and say, pray for me, Pastor. I need help. I need God. Anybody at all in the building? All right. How many of you say, Pastor, I know I need to pray more, but boy, I got more excuses. I got more circumstances, situations. I've heard you today, and I'm going to do my best to change my habits. And I want you to pray for me this morning that an urgency will come into my spirit to pray. If that's you, I want you to stand right where you're at all over this building. Pastor, I know I don't pray enough. I want to pray more. Stand all over this building. <clears throat> yes, keep standing. We make time for everything else. We've got to make time for prayer. Prayer. Well, if we're going to start praying, we might as well start now, huh? Step out from where you are and come meet me at the altar. I know I don't always do this, but I want you to come. You're standing. And if you know you should have been standing, come on. Lord, I don't want the cares of life to rob me of my time with you. Come on, scoot in. A lot of people are still coming. If this church becomes the church of prayer that God wants it to be, I can tell you miracles will follow. Amen. Signs and wonders will follow. Heaven will move. Things will change. Lift your hands to heaven. Tell God you're sorry you've been messing up. <laughs> now you want to get it right. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Lord, we're willing, but our flesh is weak. Help us to bring the flesh into subjection. Oh, God, help us. Make us a people of prayer, Lord. Make us a people of prayer. Help us understand the urgency of the hour. These are perilous days and perilous times. It's more expedient that we pray today, maybe more so than ever in our life. Help us. Help us. Help us. Forgive us, Lord, for being too busy, preoccupied, Forgive us. Remind us every day of the need to pray, the urgency, the urgency. Lord, your word and your promise to us is if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves pray and seek my face then I'll and turn from their wicked ways then I'll hear from heaven and I'll heal their lands we humble ourselves Lord by saying we can't fix it all ourselves we 
can't do it all ourselves. We need you. We need you. We need you, Lord. We need you. We need you. Lord, may a burden to pray fall upon us. May a passion to pray fall upon us. An urgency and a commitment to pray fall upon us. Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, do a work in us. Holy Spirit, do a work in us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit's doing the work. Don't get in a hurry here. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Jesus. Thank you, 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 Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Please don't hear the message and then just walk out and go about your habits and routines. If this church would pray at least 15 minutes a day, just 15 minutes. Jesus said, can't you just watch with me one hour? Just an hour? But if you just spend 15 minutes, it'll take this church to a whole new level. The Lord has shown us there are going to be miracles and signs and wonders. The place is going to be filled. There'll come a day when you've got to get here early to get a seat. It'll happen when the church prays. The church calls on God. Believe. 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 In this little glass box in front of us, there are several hundred names of people that don't know Jesus. We're not judging them. Their lives reflect that they don't know Jesus. And we're praying for them. We've been praying now for over a year over this box. We've had quite a number of people saved out of it. I'm not going to be happy till every one of them are saved. Every one of them. Would you extend a hand this way? You that are close, lay your hand on the box. Would you pray? Father, in Jesus' name, we claim every one of these souls for the cause of Christ. 
We claim these souls in Jesus' name. We pray that not one of them perish. May your sweet spirit woo them and draw them. It's the goodness of God. You said to bring men to repentance. May your goodness be manifested to them. Oh God, save their soul. Put a burden upon our hearts until we see them born again in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We thank you for their soul. In Jesus' name. Lord, lay some soul upon my heart and love that soul through me and make I always do my part to win that soul. Lord bless you and may the urgency of prayer fall all over you. May you pray like you've never prayed before. May God bless you and keep you and strengthen you. May great grace be upon your life and may God give you a spirit to discern good from evil. I bless you physically, spiritually, emotionally, financially, relationally. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, be blessed. Thank you. Love to see you at prayer meeting from 6 to 7 on Saturday.